Amen. Amen and amen. Yes, Lord, thank you that this is our net breaking season. This is the season of more. It's not coming. It's not will be. It is here and it's right here right now. And as we declared yesterday, that just as a sheriff gives a badge to his deputies and his deputies no longer need to ask permission, they just go and enforce the law with the authority they've been given. That word we just got from Shirley, the Lord has put his mark of approval upon his people. That mark of approval is the deputizing badge. It is now I've given you the authority and I've put my mark and my seal upon you. Yes, to break yokes, to break bondages, to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow. Yeah, yes, and to call forth the season of more and the season of now, for now is the season I pour out my glory, my spirit on all flesh. But I'm waiting on you, my deputized agents, to call it forth. This is not a will be, not an is be, not a gonna be. This is a now right here right now and i tell you something i know that today is a day that marks a, a it's a turning point in the market history i had i have spent the last hour in an epic battle with the demons of hell and hell has lost <sighs> i don't say things like this lightly i'm not being melodramatic or even dramatic i'm telling you Hell has thrown everything it's got against me to try and stop this, and there's nothing that can stop it. <sighs> 40 minutes ago, I couldn't even speak. I was so desperate looking for breath. And I had just enough breath inside of me. You demons of hell, get back into the pit of hell from where you've gone. Go! <sighs> it's left me a little lightheaded. Left me a little dizzy left me a little short of breath but it's left me stronger than i was an hour ago hell's lost there's nothing going to stop this move of god there's nothing going to stop my leadership over this church and there's nothing going to stop any of you the word of god says jesus said i've given you all authority over all power of the enemy over scorks and scorpions snakes and scorpions and all power of the enemy and all by no means nothing shall harm you and no demon from the pit of hell will harm you you take that debutizing badge which is the word of god with his seal of authority and you tell it to go back to the pit from which it came jesus gives us the very example when he goes across to gethsemane and the man filled with legion and legion says Oh, please, Jesus, please, Jesus, don't send us to the abyss. And Jesus, okay, I won't. And they went into the pigs, and the pigs went over the cliff and into the sea, and they all drowned. But why would they ask Jesus not to send us into the pit, into the abyss? Because he knew, they knew that he had the power to send them right back to that thing and seal them in it. And Jesus says, all these things that you've seen me do, all these things that I've taught you, you can do. And I think that that example is in there for us to exemplify the fact that we take these demons from the pit of hell and every plot, every scheme that comes against us, and we send it into the abyss. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you that you are pouring out your glory. You're pouring out your glory. You're pouring out your spirit on all flesh. You've been doing it all season in this year of 2024. You did it in 23. You did it in 22. You did it in 21. You started showing it to me about 20 years ago. You're doing it now, but God, you're just amplifying it. And that's what this net breaking season is all about. It doesn't mean that you were never pouring it out. It means that you're now pouring it out in such measure. It's going to bust our nets and we're going to have to call in the reinforcements to help us carry the blessings and the authority away with us. Yes, we decree and declare hash, baz, halal, quick to, quick to plunder the enemy. Oh, and swift to carry it all away. This is the season of our nut busting, net breaking. Yes, this is the season of the overflow. Overflow in healing miracles, overflow in family miracles, overflow in relational miracles, overflow in every promise of God, overflow in the justice of God, overflow in the overthrow of the ne'er-do-wells and the evil and the wicked, overflow of 
above all of it. You will see it. This is the Red Sea that parts for as my overflow. Oh, here's my holy God. Thank you, Lord. This is the season of the Red Sea for as my overflow comes, the overflow of blessing, the overflow of healing, the overflow of miracle. You will see the sea part to the left. Oh, and the overflow of the overthrow of the wicked. You will see the sea part to the right. This is the partation through which you will walk. Walk through that valley as my overthrow comes. Walk through that valley. This is the season not to look back at your enemy, but to look forward at the promises of God and simply walk through on dry ground and put down now that temptation inside of you that says, oh, it was better over there. It was better under oppression. That's a lie from the pit of hell, and we are walking through into the full freedom. This is the season of the overthrow of the overflow, the overflow of my overthrow of the wicked and the evil. They shall reap what they have sown, and as they reap what they have sown, it shall all be taken away. They are the wicked servants from whom it was taken and given to the righteous who did something with it. This is why I've been telling you, go out, go forward, and do something with what I've been teaching you. Call forward miracles. Call forward miracles. Call forward here, mirror. This is the season for you to take those talents and multiply them and to the wicked servant who did nothing. I made them all the opportunity to be my servants and some chose to do nothing but sow wickedness. And now they will reap what they have sown for. Did I not say to the one who did nothing with what I gave him, did I not call him a wicked servant? Did I not say, take it from him and give it to the one who did something with it? This is the season. This is the season. This is how the wealth of the wicked stored for the righteous shall be returned to you, the righteous. For you are the ones who did something with what I said. For you are the ones who went forward with the teaching. Yes, some of it's been hard, some of it's been soft, but all of it has been for you. I've been exhorting you, I've been lifting you, I've been teaching you, I've been training you how to be the righteous servants, the ones whose hands now should be open to catch the overflow as my overflow of overthrow of the wicked comes to full force. This is the season of the overflow of my blessings and my promises. Thus says the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Let's just praise him for a minute. I'm going to put on some worship music, and I encourage you to sing with this. Worship our Lord this morning. Everything changes today. Everything changes today. This is why this battle has been so fierce. This is why this battle has been so fierce. I thought I was done with this last night, and it came back with a vengeance this morning. He let me seat in peace from about 5 o'clock till about 6 o'clock. And about 6 o'clock this morning, unholy hell unleashed itself on me. <sighs> well, look, look, look. I'm here. And hell, you lost. You're a liar. You're a liar. Satan, you're a liar. You're a deceiver. And let the anointing that's flowed into me to stand in strength of belief, no matter the circumstances, let that flow into every single one under the, under the sound of my voice this morning. That no matter how the circumstance looks, God's promises are yes and amen. Praise you, God. Satan, you're a liar. Thief, you've been caught. And today is payback day. Today is payback day. This 30th day of August. Session 840 for the Declaration Church. Today is payback day. And you now watch God's ecclesia rise and shine with the glory 
of the Lord in a measure, Satan, you've never seen before. A net-busting anointing. A net-boisting glory. Power and authority that's always been there, finally discovered and realized. Today is the day that we unleash the kingdom of God on you, and you now will understand what it means to experience a holy hell come upon yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, mountains, move. Mountains, move! I say mountains, move. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, we worship you in this house today. We worship you in this house today, God. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You worship him this morning. Worship him. Worship him. He's about to pour out things you can't even begin to imagine. It's already begun. Yes. 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 A little tsunami coming out of each and every single one of us. Not a little trickle, not a little stream. A tsunami coming out of each of us who's awake. And as each of these tsunamis come together, it creates a tsunami of an order of magnitude, the likes of which this earth has never seen, and then others join into this righteous cause. This is how this works. We're not sitting around waiting for it. This is not a trickle. This is not a tributary. The full force of a tsunami is inside of you, and God is commanding you this day to let it out. Let it out. And I got a couple words I'm going to share today that go right in line with the teaching on healing we're going to do. By the way, I have written a complete set of study notes about how to release healing. <clears throat> but it's not just healing. Everything in that document, everything is a biblical scriptural principle that applies. This is how you grab hold of your authority. This is how you tear down a stronghold. This is how you strip an altar of its power. This is how you release healing. It's all the same principles. The only thing that changes is the circumstance to which we apply it. All of these things are there, and I'm going to do a full teaching on this today, and every one of you are going to walk out of here fully equipped. It's been loaded into the decree site, and you can go download it. It's a one-pager. It's a one-page document, double-sided, PDF, that will take you through everything I'm going to walk you through today. For those of you who are here at our dining table, we had a glorious night around my dining table on Wednesday night. And I think they'll tell you, just like the guy you see that hosts Alpha, he's a very different guy than the guy that comes screaming at demons here at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> and it was a very different guy around our dining table on that night. The teacher's heart come out. That document has been fully upgraded. For those of you that were there on Wednesday night, I've rewritten it, incorporating all the free-flowing notes that came out of my head. They're now in there. Everything is there. And I want to encourage you to get a copy of it. If you have access to Telegram, you can go get it on Telegram right now. If you don't have access to Telegram, you can go into the decree call. If you give me a second, I just can't keep talking and then go look for a document and then post a link where you can download it. But if you'll just bear with me for give me a minute, I'll go find a link and I'll stick it into the chat here. I want this document going far and wide and I want this teaching going far and wide. It is time for the body of Christ to wake up and understand who they are and to simply do what God has told us to do. We need to get hold of these truths. Let it start here in this declaration church. Let it be known here in this ecclesia. Let it be said throughout the nations that this mighty little ecclesia is the one that went forward and finally taught the church how to be a church. This is the church that taught the church how to be a church for far too long. <sighs> the body of Christ, the pastors and the prod, they've taught the body of Christ how to become independent on a prayer team when what the church should have been doing is teaching the body of Christ how to be the prayer team and go make disciples of the nations. Jesus said, therefore, go and do this and do that. And let it be said of this ecclesia from this day forward that this is the church that pioneered a move of a spirit across this earth to be doers of the word, and not simply who, hear, <coughs> hearers and observers. We are not a spectator church. We are a church that does the word of God and doing the word of God is a joyous thing to do. And I thank you, Lord. 
All right, give me a second to go find it. I'm going to find a link that I can stick here into Telegram so that you'll be able to go get a copy of it. Give me just one second here. You can now pull this document off of Telegram. You can go to the decree site and pull it out of the decree document. You can just hit download decrees. It's in a folder called miscellaneous teachings. You can find it in there. And it's now right here in the chat. I want this document going far and wide, and I want people to hear what's about to be released in this church today. I was going to, we were going to start, I was, I was intending to start with making some decrees this morning because we are the decree for Canada. I'm simply, I'm going to stay away because we were going to, I was going to pull out Barry Wunsch's word again and activate that word again. I have a couple other decrees about the kingdom of darkness and pulling that thing down. And I just, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to take our focus off of what we're going to do here today. Today is a day that this church and churches like us all around these nations release signs, wonders, and miracles into the atmosphere of our nations. And the only thing that will hold it back from happening is fear, unbelief, and doubt. And today we're going to shatter that once and for all, that this is a church that understands the word of God and goes forth to do the thing that we've been called to do as fully deputized agents of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go straight into it. And then I got a couple of words that will come in behind it. Let me just uh, get a little liquid onto me just to calm things down in my throat and my chest here. And then we're gonna go. So for those of you watching here by live stream, those of you who are watching a recording, thank you for bearing with me. You haven't been part of us probably for weeks. <coughs> We've been tearing down strongholds. This is probably the greatest era. We've done some amazing things inside this little ecclesia. We've got... <laughs> <laughs> we've gone after the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of darkness is terrified of what this little church does. We've been hidden and we've been unknown. And the Lord says this day, you shall be hidden unknown no more. I've had you as a, I've had you as my mercenaries. I've had you as my Navy SEALs who go in, e e exact your damage on the kingdom of darkness. You get in, you destroy and you get out before the enemy even knows what's hit them. You've done everything I've asked you to do. You've taught my ecclesia how to go forth. And today is the day that you shall be a hidden tip of the spear no more today is the day that i'm bringing you to the fore today is the day that i bring you into my glorious light today is the day that the world will know what happens in this little church the kind of teaching that takes place in this little church this little church is not a little church this little church has done such tremendous damage to the to the kingdom of hell that the kingdom of hell is terrified of this mighty and mighty gideon's army oh the kingdom of darkness is terrified and the size of this army expands this day in the name of Jesus Christ and strongholds will fall Jericho's coming down and the walls will crumble all around us for all to see and it will be said that this little declaration church this decree for the nations has changed the nations forevermore for it has done everything I've asked it to do whether popular or unpopular it just went in obedience and did and Lord I thank you for that today and today God I'm asking you to put an anointing on every single word that I speak today Holy Spirit you know we say that we wait upon the Lord what is waiting it's not waiting for a bus it's not sitting around waiting for time to pass to wait is to serve as a as a as a as a, as a waiter as a server in a restaurant waits upon his guest Lord today we say that you are our guest for we have invited you into this ecclesia we've invited you into this sanctuary it's your sanctuary but it's our job to invite your presence today God we invite your presence into this place and God I'd ask you to take every word <clears throat> every word and wrap it with Holy Spirit infusion that there be an impartation today that never leaves that it be woven into the fabric of the souls woven into the fabric what is what does it mean to wait it means to bind to weave to serve yes God let us wait upon you Lord as these words are speaking your words your ideas your sentiments your instructions weave them bind them 
but we wait upon you. We kava with you. Yes. Let the kavad, let your Shekinah glory shine in this church. Let your light shine brightly this day, Father God, and every word spoken. Let it be infused with Holy Spirit to become a permanence of the very fabric of our lives, that we go forward now, having shattered every last vestige of fear, anxiety, doubt, and what if. We don't say, what if it doesn't work? We say, what if it does? What if it does work? What's gonna happen when it works? Not even what if, what happens when it works? You walk delivered, you walk out free. That's what happens when we speak the word of God. These are the words we speak from this day forward. No more what if, I bind what if, I break what if. And today I say in the name of Jesus Christ, this is the day that we will say, this is what happens when we speak the word of God. No more what ifs, no more what will they think. The only thing that we think now is God, what do you think of this? And what happens when we do this? Well, the glory of the Lord will fall on you. You know, it's an amazing thing. I heal, for, I, I pray for people and God heals them. That's what happens. Let it be said this day that every member of this church will go forward this day. It's an amazing thing that happens. I pray for people and God heals them. It's an amazing thing that happens. I pray for people and God heals them. Oh, it's an amazing thing that happens. I pray for people and God heals them. It's an amazing thing. I speak to altars and they come down. Oh, it's an amazing thing. I speak to the kingdom of darkness and it shatters to hell. Oh, it's an amazing thing. I speak in the power and the authority of God. This is our language sets. No more what if, no more what that, no more this, no more that. I, oh, it's an amazing thing. I pray for people and God heals them. Oh, it's an amazing thing. I speak to altars and God tears them down. Oh, it's an amazing thing. I speak to the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of darkness shatters under the power of God. Oh, it's an amazing thing. This is our language set from this day forward. Oh, it's an amazing thing. Oh, it's an amazing thing. I only see one here even reacting to that. Is this not reaching you? I mean, am I just wasting my breath here? I spent two hours trying to put breath back into my lungs and nobody wants to hear this. This is the Lord of God. He's been prophesying here all morning. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You dry bones come to life in the name of Jesus Christ. Woo! Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, let us begin, shall we? I need to catch my breath. Oh, strained lungs, hear the word of the Lord. I call to the four winds and I say, Holy Spirit, let it be your Ruach HaKodesh that fills these very lungs. <sighs> Not the exertion of man or diaphragm. Let it be your breath, your Ruach HaKodesh. Let it be the wind of the Spirit that fills these very lungs this day that every word come with the fire of God imprinted and emblazed upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Your keys to releasing healing. And if today were not the day of the healing summit, I could change the title. Your keys to tearing down strongholds. I could change the title to your keys to breaking strongholds. Your keys to victory. Today we call it your keys to releasing healing. And we're going to look at it through the lens of healing. But every word spoken and everything here is applicable because these are God's and Jesus's instructions to us how to deal with all of it. We've been bought by the blood of the lamb, which restored all the power and the authority. And it's time that this church, finally, this church and every other church finally come to understand this. And Lord, today, yes, even before I start, Father God, I thank you for the anointing that you've put on this little gathering. I thank you, Father God, that this small but mighty company of warriors has changed the world. It has. You know, you got to get this through your heads. You really got to get this through your heads. This has not been some futile exercise in self-aggrandizement. 
This little church has been changing the world for three years and two months. This little church has done everything God has asked it to do for three years and two months. This little church has done what God asked it to do to go decree his promises over the nations and thus establish them. And this little church has done everything it's asked to do to exhort the people and infuse it with my instructions that they become doers of the word. And this little church has been a little church for two years, for three years and two months. And the Lord says today, Yes, I've had a special anointing on you. I've had you go forth as my kingdom warriors. No more. Today is the day that you begin to expand and you begin to grow. I prophesy that forward today that you will be hidden no more. Today is the day, Lord, I say that every word spoken today, that it come into the fabric of every life represented here. It weaves itself into the soul of these people. It weaves itself into the spirit of these people. But Father God, thank you that you will do it for them and you will do it for us. But even God, you said you decree a thing and you thus establish it. I say that this day, every word spoken today every word coming through this microphone into every speaker that carries it lord i say that this day we speak these words into the atmosphere of our nations and these words penetrate and permeate the churches of this earth that we are no longer distinguishable from one another this is not about saying hey look what those guys did this is not about hoarding it to ourselves this is not about us being a special group this is about us having done what we've been asked to do as his special forces and now it's time for the things that he's anointed into this church as we come in to Labor Day. We have been laboring. Oh, I think it's an amazing thing. It has some days been a labor of love. Some days it's been a labor of sacrifice to do what we had to do here 840 times. But as we come into Labor Day, the Lord says this day, as you come into Labor Day, the baby is being birthed and the labor is over and it's time for what this church has done to penetrate and permeate churches all over this earth. For as you have decreed these things, they've gone into the atmosphere of my kingdom for it's all my kingdom and I will pour it back down now upon the people of God. Thank you, my people, for being of service to me. Thank you, my people, for walking in obedience to me. Thank you, my people, for what you have done. Now you will see See the fruit of all of it. Now you will see the, 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 the reaping of that which you have sown in this little gathering. Yes, and every seed will produce after its own kind, and every seed will produce a harvest that's a hundredfold greater than that which was planted. I am now pouring out upon the nations what I've been pouring out upon you so you can pour it back out upon them. Oh God, I thank you for that today in the name of Jesus Christ. Your keys to releasing healing. Here they are. It is, oh, I feel the fire of God all over this. It is absolutely critical. I read this yesterday. I've, re, I've been honing this. It's absolutely critical. I want you to listen to every word here. And I'm telling you, I want you to get a copy of this document. It's absolutely critical that we God's people, because these are just study notes. I'm going to talk through it. You're going to take some notes. I expect you to have pen and paper and, and write things down. It's absolutely critical that we God's people, we the redeemed in Christ, we who have been made kings and priests, know who we are in Christ and know the authority that we carry. You must know this. This is the most critical thing to understand. This is the most, everybody's focused on salvation. That's a great thing, but salvation is the beginning of the journey, not the end of it. <clears throat> It's because of salvation that we get the authority. It is absolutely critical that we understand who we are in Christ and the authority that we carry. This is the most critical thing to understand. Understanding the authority that we carry is the thing that enables us to release healing, push back demonic agendas, and usher in the kingdom of heaven unto this earth. This is the most critical thing. Salvation is what's afforded and paid the way for you to have it. You have authority jesus said jesus said to you jesus said to you jesus says to you this is not past tense this is a now word jesus said was yesterday no jesus says right now jesus says 
I have to change that. This this document's going to get edited one more time and said will be turned to says. Jesus says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. So what are you afraid of? I have given you all authority to tread over all power of the enemy. What's one of the powers of the enemy? To inflict sickness and disease. I have given you all power over the enemy. I've given you all power and all authority over all power of the enemy. You have more than him. So we're tearing down a stronghold. I've given you authority over all power of the enemy and their altars. I've given you all power over the enemy and their wickedness. But today we're talking about healing. And one of the strategies of the enemy is to bring sickness and disease. Sickness and disease comes from the pit of hell. And Jesus says, I've given you all authority over all power of the enemy, including sickness and disease. So what does authority mean? Well, let's look at it. Authority, the power to determine. And Lord, I just pray that as these words are being spoken, there's an impartation coming into every spirit and soul here, that this become a permanent weaving into into the fabric of who they are. Authority, the power to determine, the power to adjudicate, the power to otherwise settle issues or disputes. There's a sickness in my body and I got the power to adjudicate it. It's a dispute. It's a dispute and I will settle it right here and I will settle it right now. Authority, the power to determine, to de- adjudicate, to otherwise settle issues or dispute. Authority. It's jurisdiction, authority, the right to control, the right to command, and the right to determine an outcome. You have the right to determine an outcome. (laughs) Authority, a power or a right that's delegated or given. Well, Jesus says, so, okay, hang on. Let's grab this definition now. Let's really get this. Authority, a power or a right. I want you to say this with me. I have both power and right. I've got the power and I've got the right. A power or a right that is delegated or given. Jesus says, behold, I have given you authority. In other words, Jesus says, I have given you power and I have given you the right. I've delegated it to you. I've given it to you. It is yours. You don't need to beg me for it. You don't need to ask me for it. When I said it's finished, I said it was done. It's finished. You have it. It's time to understand it. For a deputy with a deputy badge that doesn't understand what a deputy badge does, the deputy is ineffective. But the deputy that knows that he carries the authority of the power in the government, he can go forth and do what he must do. You have been deputized with my authority. Authority. A person or a body of persons. Well, I'm looking at a bunch of persons and I'm looking at a tremendous body of persons. As a church, we have authority. As an individual, you have authority. Jesus said it. Jesus meant it. I have given you authority over all power of the enemy. I have given you the right. I have delegated it to you. The power is yours. You now have the power to determine, adjudicate, and settle issues and disputes. You've got jurisdiction jurisdiction and you've got the right to control and listen to command that's a verb those are all verbs go out and do these things i've told you to command to control to adjudicate (coughs) to settle these are verbs it means jesus said go do these things with the authority i've given you (coughs) authority The authority that we've been given is akin to the authority a sheriff gives to his deputies. Once they've been deputized, they don't need to ask permission to enforce, adjudicate, or determine, or command anymore. The sheriff said, hey, listen, there's only one of me. There's 20 of you. I can only do the part that I can do. I've adjudicated, I've I've, I've deputized you. Go and do it. You don't need to ask me. You know the law. You know the commands. You know the scriptures. Now go adjudicate it. Go settle it. Go command it. Go tear it down and go make it right. This is what Jesus said. This is the nature of our authority. Lord, I thank you, God. 
the power to enforce, the power to decree, the power to command, the power to tear down is yours, just as it belongs to a deputy that the sheriff to whom he gave a badge. Jesus gave you a badge. It's called the mark of the Holy Spirit. It's called the blood of the lamb, which you've painted over the doorpost of your house, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Every time you've taken communion, you have been authorized, deputized. When you said yes to him, he gave you the full authority. Oh, like babes on milk, it took a while till they could get to steak, but eventually they got there and this is your day now in the name of Jesus Christ. You are an extension of the King of Kings. You're an extension of the Lord of Lords. You're an extension of the sheriff of all sheriffs. His name is Jesus. Simply go out there and exercise your authority. You have legal power. Sometimes the deputy has to call in the SWAT team to help him do the things that he's been called to do. Well, sometimes we, the deputies of Jesus, just call in the hosts and the angels. It's the same thing. That's what the hosts are. There are heavenly SWAT team. And we can call them forth. All right, what's this got to do with healing? Has everything to do with healing. Jesus said, therefore I say to you, these are the signs that accompany those who, are my, who, who, who believe in me. They'll, clean, they'll, they'll, they'll heal the sick, they'll cleanse the lepers, they'll cast out demons. We are those who believe. And he said, I've given you the authority. I mean, I think I, I can't be any more clear about what it means to hold authority. I can't be any more clear about how Jesus said it. I'm calling you, my sheriffs. So I want to talk about healing for a second, and then we're going to jump back into this. <clears throat> we don't have to ask permission to go and heal someone. Remember, the disciples and the apostles, they all went out healing the sick. They went out two by two, healing the sick. Long before the Holy Spirit fell, Jesus said, go. Go do this. Go heal them. Go cleanse them. And they came back. They were amazed. Wow. Wow. Even the demons obey us. And Jesus said, do not rejoice because the demons obey. Rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that you're registered in heaven. Every one of you are registered in heaven. And the fact that you've been registered in heaven is evidence of the fact that you've been given authority here on earth. So yesterday I said, you know, listen, there are two things. So, you know, Jesus said, anything you ask for in my name, you ask for it in my name, it will be done for you. And it'll glorify the Son, it'll glorify the Father. But Jesus also said, therefore I say to you, go. So what is this? Do I have to ask? No. Listen, there are things, I, I, I know I talked about this yesterday, but we're going to reinforce this. I don't know, yesterday or the day before, whenever it is. There, it's, like, it's like there's a, I'm going down a road and then there's a fork in the road. On one side of that fork, and this is all prayer, on one side of the fork are the things that I have to ask for. God, I need favor in this meeting. Lord, I'm about to go into this store and they want me to wear a mask. I can't wear a mask. I'm looking for your grace. I'm looking for your favor. And I need you to cloak me. And I ask for this in Jesus' name. These are not things that I can do for myself. These are things that I have to ask for. I ask for them in Jesus' name and God says, I'll do them. You ask for them in my name. I do not need to ask permission to heal the sick. Jesus said, go do it. So there, are, so there are things that I do that I can't do for myself that I ask for in Jesus' name, and then there are things that I do with the authority that's been given, because if I've been given authority, I don't need to ask permission to it, and I don't need to beg him to go and do it for me. I just simply go and do it, regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm feeling healthy, whether I'm feeling sick, whether I'm feeling spiritual, whether I'm feeling unspiritual, it doesn't matter. I've got his mark, I've got his Holy Spirit, my name's registered in the book of heaven, and the authority is here whether I feel it or not. I think I made a note here. There are some days when the sheriff doesn't feel like going to work, but he goes anyway and he still arrests a few scoundrels. <laughs> there are some days I don't feel like going to work, but I still go out there and arrest a few scoundrels. <clears throat> All right. So, you know, we, it, we, went, down to, we went down to Seattle. <laughs> 
to see what we brought Tom Loud onto the call. And honestly, I mean, Tom, what I what I love about this is that we're all saying the same things. We just say it different ways. And if we can hear the same thing from a multiplicity of different ways, it just kind of layers itself in and comes in. Tom didn't say anything I never said before. He just said it different. But I went, I went down to Seattle because, and I wanted to be part of his street ministry. Now, uh, and why would you go? The people said, I actually had some people ask me, why would you bother going? You walk in this stuff all the time. You see healings all the time. You see miracles all the time. Yeah, it's true. But even Tiger Woods and Arnold Palmer had a golf coach. The best of the best still kept a coach because sometimes the coach will see something that they don't see and he'll see something from a brand new angle that just takes the game to a new level. I went down to Seattle. I said, man, I, I, this, I'm no stranger to this stuff. But if I can see this from a new angle, if I can catch just one thing that I never caught before, oh man, and take that back, take, why wouldn't I want that? So that all to frame. <clears throat> We go down there, and Tom does a little teaching because there's a whole gathering. I mean, some people flew in. We came down from Vancouver. There was a lady that flew in from California. There were some Chinese people. They were all they were, you know, a nice little group of people. And Tom's approach, Tom, Tom just simply walks up to people on the street. He goes, hey, you got any pain in your body? And some of them go, yeah. He goes, hey, can I pray for you? That works for him. He's just got that right kind of personality that he could do that. I wouldn't work for me. I said, I said, and so we actually turned this into a point of discussion between the two of us. And I looked at the rest of the crowd. I said, yeah, I mean, do you trust me enough to speak to these people? Tom said, yeah, I trust you enough. Okay. okay. I said, I want you to listen to what Tom just said. Everything Tom just said is right. He walks up to people. He says, hey, and he just walks up to strangers, whether they're exhibiting pain or they're not exhibiting pain, whether they're, whether they're exhibiting a condition or they're not exhibiting a condition. He just walks up to and goes, hey, you got any pain in your body? It's, it works for him. I, I could never do that. It wouldn't work for me because that's not my style. So I typically, I just, I, I look, I see things. I just, now I don't go looking for things. I just happen to observe them. I just have, I see the person who's limping across the parking lot. And I just say things like, wow, man, you look really uncomfortable. That looks painful. And that's what, that's how I approach them. Or we had this guy named Rainbow John that was right, you know, we live very close to the dike here, right on the Fraser River, going out to the ocean here. And then one day I'm walking out there and there's a dude with his, his hands swollen up like a balloon inside a cast. And I just walked up to that guy and go, man, that looks painful. Oh, he responds, yeah, it is. I said, would you like to get rid of it? The point of this is <clears throat> each of us have to use our own natural style and our own natural words. I will use words that are comfortable for me Tom uses words and an approach that's comfortable for him, and you'll use words that are comfortable and an approach that's comfortable for you. So you don't have to use my words. You don't have to use Tom's words. And everything I'm going to talk about here, now the big difference between this, everything we're talking about here works whether I'm holding a healing summit in, in your home or I'm doing one in a, in a rented facility somewhere. The, the only difference is, if I see somebody on the street, they're not coming to me for prayer, so I have to find a way to start the conversation. But if I'm holding a healing summit, they've come, which means that they've come for prayer, so I don't need to say something to them like, hey, that looks pretty uncomfortable. Would you mind if I prayed for you? I don't need to, I don't need to do all of that because they came for the specific purpose of receiving prayer. So the only difference between this and that is... is on the street, I have to make an approach that breaks the ice and gets us comfortable so we can have a conversation. And at a thing like a healing summit or standing in the prayer line or the, standing at the altar as part of a prayer team, they're coming to you for prayer anyway. So we, we, we don't have to, hey, do you want prayer? <laughs> that's why they're here. Okay, so that's the only thing that's different. So <clears throat> I typically walk up to people. I see them. Like I, I, I was telling at the table the other night, I was over Canadian Tire on Tuesday. I needed to get something, and there was a guy, and he was he was pretty chatty. There was a pretty good line there, and this I mean this guy was this guy did not look good. He was limping. His it's like he didn't have any knees, and it's like he didn't have any. You know a tripod when you pull out the tripod and you got the big part on top, and then you pull out the the medium part of the leg, and then you pull down the small part of the leg, and it goes. That's what his legs looked like. He had this great big giant thigh. And then it just got smaller and turned into his calf. And then his calf turned into his foot. He had no ankles and he was limping. Like this guy had these 
big swollen calves and these great big swall it was so obvious it was it was clear that he was in a great deal of pain and distress and in the store he just looked back and started talking to me well i, I didn't do this in the store but as we walked and it was raining it was raining buckets on tuesday and so i walked out we were chatting and i just looked at him and i went i went man you got no ankles it, it, it was just obvious I wasn't insulting him. I was just commenting on what I saw. Man, you got no, man, you got no ankles. That must be terribly painful. He goes, it is. I've got severe nerve damage and my knees all bad. I said, and I said, and it appears to me that your left leg is shorter than your right one. He says, how do you know? I said, because you got to bend the right one so that you're standing at the same level with the left one. He says, you can see. I said, it's obvious. I said, would you allow me to pray for you over this? And he said, yeah. I mean, this is how I start the conversation. Rainbow John's walking down. His hand is swollen up like a balloon inside a cast. I, I just, I, so I see these things. Or the, the, the time that we saw that lady in the parking lot over at the Save On Foods. She's just walking. She's, and man, she's limping. And it's clear that she's in pain. So with a soft and approachable voice and with inflection, I said, wow, you look like you're in a great deal of discomfort and pain. Oh, I am, she says. You know, could I pray for you? You would do that? Sure I would. Right here? Well, why not here? Okay. So that's how I approach him. Tom just simply walks up to him and says, hey, you got any pain in your body? And it, somehow that works for him. It wouldn't work for me. It's not my style. It's not my approach. So you got to find a way that's, that's comfortable to you. But God is calling us out now to be carriers of his glory and carriers of signs, wonders, and miracles. He's, he's taking us to the streets now. We, I mean, that theme has come up a few times in the last month. Taking it to the streets. Maybe we'll play some Doobie Brothers today. I don't know. I got it, by the way. <laughs> it's right there. One click away. Well, three clicks away. I got to go, go to the folder, and then I got to uh, Anyway, I got it. Taking it to the streets. We might play that today. But when they're, coming to a, when they're coming to your house because you said you're having a healing summit, we don't need to ask permission to pray for them because it's pretty clear that that's the reason why they came. So the, whole, the only issue is really, how do we approach them? And I know that, I, listen, if I see limping, infirm people everywhere I go, you see limping, infirm people everywhere you go. True or false? And God says from this day forward, what are you going to do with it and what are you going to do about it? You, my, you, my deputies. <laughs> no more sitting on the sidelines. If you see it, just do what I asked you to do. All right. <clears throat> are we getting there? That's, that's, that's the approach. That, that's how I approach it. You find, your, find your approach. Maybe it takes you one or two tries. Just to get, just to get, but the only way to get comfortable with it is to get comfortable with it. The only way to get comfortable with it is to get comfortable with it. And you do it a couple times and it's not uncomfortable anymore because then you see that people are actually quite, really quite receptive. If you approach them in a human, in a loving, in an empathetic way, by and large, 99.98% of them are overly receptive. And then you realize that all the noise in your head about how do I do this was just noise. It's a lie of the devil. They're open to it. Go prove this to yourself now. All right, so we've been given authority. Jesus said, all authority I've been given to you. I've given you the authority over all power of the enemy. We now understand what authority is. Authority is the power to determine, adjudicate, settle issues, the power to control, command, and determine an outcome, the power or a right delegated, so we know what that is. Authority we've been given is just like a share. You've got the sheriff's badge. Just go out and use it now. Okay, you, you tracking me so far? All right. <clears throat> so Jesus said, Behold, I've given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions over all power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. And Jesus says, Jesus says this day, Jesus says to you this day, 
Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, Jesus is saying this right now. This is not something he said 2,000 years ago, 2,024 years ago. This is something that Jesus is saying right here, right now, because Jesus is alive and his words are spirit and truth and they're alive and they're alive now. This is a now word. Jesus is sitting in our midst right now saying, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I am doing. Sounds like he just said, you should expect to do the same things that he does because I've already given you the authority. I've already anointed you for this. I've authorized, well, I don't feel anointed, but we've already covered that. It doesn't matter how you feel. It, it, it's irrelevant how you feel. There are days I don't feel like going to work, but I go to work and I do what I got to do and I do a pretty good job at it, whether I feel like it or not. <sighs> right? Right. Yeah, the only answer there is right. Yes, that's correct, sir. <clears throat> okay. Truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus is saying, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the things that I am doing. He'll do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. That's John 14, 12. Jesus says that to you right here, right now. I paraphrase it this way. Listen, this is Jesus now. I let Jesus, let me be your voice into this earth right now. These are the words of Jesus. Listen. Selah, get a hold of this. Listen to me. I'm going to the Father and I'm leaving you here in charge, fully vested with my authority. That's what that scripture says. Listen, I'm going to the Father, but I'm leaving you right here, fully in charge, fully vested with my authority. Do what I used to do. I trained you. I taught you. I authorized you. I deputized you. I've given you the authority. I'm going to the Father and I'm leaving you here now to go do it yourselves. That's what that scripture says. <clears throat> there can be no mistaking this. This isn't theory. This isn't, Jesus either said it or he didn't. We either believe him or we don't. <clears throat> now catch this. Peter, Peter says in Acts 3, 6, He's standing up. They're getting ready to go into the temple. They're walking past gate. We've all know this scripture. We all, we've all seen this verse so many times. I want you to look at it in a brand new way. So, God showed me this yesterday. I wrote Wednesday after, what's today? Thursday, today's Friday. Wednesday after. Peter says to the guy at the gate, beautiful, who's sitting there on his mat, begging for money, looking for a handout. Jesus, Peter looks at him and says, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have, I give to you. What did he have? Somebody want to just turn on your mic and answer that question? What did he have? Not you, Terry Deck, not you. You were here <laughs> Wednesday night. Authority. Authority. Honesty. He had authority. <laughs> yeah, he had authority. Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have, I'll give to you. In the authority, now I'm going to paraphrase this. In the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. He spoke to it with authority. That's what he had. He didn't have healing. Healing comes from God. He had the authority to call it forth. I don't have silver. I don't have gold. I haven't got a nickel to my name, but what I've got, I'll give to you. I've got authority, and I say, get up and walk. <laughs> now, I want you to notice something. He spoke to it like it was a living, breathing, listening, hearing thing. Because I wouldn't speak to something if I didn't think it couldn't hear me. That would just be futile and useless. But Jesus said, you speak to that mountain and expect it to move. What? Speak to it. The mountain I'm talking about is that demonic thing. And I'm telling you, every demon can hear. And I'm telling you, every sickness can hear. In Ezekiel 37, we read, God said, prophesy to the bones. And he says, Ezekiel says, listen, dry bones. And he spoke to them as if they could hear because he they could and when i speak to sickness and disease i speak to it it can hear me 
because there's a demonic realm. Remember, we fight not flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. And even though you don't see them, doesn't mean that they're not there and doesn't mean that they're not listening and they can't hear. They hear. You speak to it. <clears throat> you still with me? All right. So Peter, right there in Acts, he says, hey, listen, silver or gold, I don't have any of that. I ain't got a penny to my name, but what I do have, I got. I got all kinds of authority. And I say, get up and walk. And there wasn't an ounce or even a hint of wavering in it. Well, I wonder if this is going to work. No, he just did what Jesus told him to do. From everything I read in the scriptures, he's never done that before. I never see that anywhere else. So it was probably the first time he ever did it. He did it in the utmost of faith, knowing that Jesus said, I've given you authority, just exercise it. So in faith, he exercised authority, even though he'd never done it before and had no past experience with it. He just took the word of the Lord at face value and said, you said it, you meant it, I'm going to do it. And the guy got up and walked. But it takes your unwavering faith. Is this working? Are you like are you being encouraged by this? Are you are you hearing these scriptures in a new way? Are you seeing how they finally connect? Are we connecting some dots here finally? <clears throat> amen. Yes and amen. All right. So Jesus says, All these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. In my name, they will drive out demons. Hey, demon, in the name of Jesus, get out. You speak to it as a living, hearing, listening thing. You speak to it like a living, hearing, listening thing, because it is. Get out. I did that this morning. You see this? My health is starting to restore. I came out. I was, I, it, it took me a while to get wound back up in the... I was up in my bathroom hacking my lungs out this morning. I coughed so violently for so long that I was dizzy and it took me the better part of an hour now to get my, to get my, to get my voice back. But this is what I said to it. You freaking stinking demon from the pit of hell, you get the hell out of me and go back into the abyss where you belong. Hell, you lose, I win. You cannot steal my voice and you won't stop this teaching. Go back to hell where you came from. I spoke to it just like that as a listening, hearing, demonic thing over which I have all power over the enemy. Now, sometimes you got to do it a few times. <clears throat> so you do. Some demons are stubborn like the rest of you. So we got to be told a few times. <laughs> I'm not calling you a demon. I'm calling, we're all stubborn. We've all got some stubborn. We've all got a bit of resistance in us. Oh, come on, lighten up, laugh at that. It's true. I'm just calling out the truth here. I'm just calling. Some demons are stubborn just like the rest of us. Just like, and we got to hear it a couple times before we start moving. Same thing with the demons. Okay, are we good? Good. David knew this. In Psalm 103, 3 and 4, we read, He forgives all my sins and he heals all my diseases. Who's he? God. So Jesus says, go speak to it and it must obey you. And here we're told he does it. All we're doing is opening our mouth and speaking with authority so that God can move and do the things that he said he would do. He forgives my sins. He heals my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with tender mercies. David knew this. And he's telling us here, and it's recorded for us. So, <clears throat> Jesus does the healing, not you, not me. We just need to release the healing with the authority we've been given in faith, no matter how we feel. It has nothing to do with how we feel. Sometimes the sheriff doesn't feel like going to work either, but he does go out and he still arrests a few demons. 
So whether I feel like it or not, whether I'm feeling overly anointed or not, or whether I'm feeling overly spiritual or not, if I see a dude walking, limping through a parking lot, I'm just going to, hey, man, you look pretty uncomfortable. He's going to go, yeah, I am. You'd like to get rid of that? I sure would. Well, listen to what happens next. Then I look at him and I say, then I, now listen, listen, watch this. This is what I say. This is how the conversation unfolds. Man, you look pretty uncomfortable. <clears throat> oh, buddy, you have no idea. Okay, so Gordy, Gordo would say, buddy, you have no idea. Trent would say, that's something Trent would say. Buddy, you have no idea. That's, how, that's, how, that's pretty much how Trent would say it, except to be with a Trent accent and I can't reproduce that. Hey, hey Trent, you look pretty uncomfortable. Oh, buddy, you have no idea. That's how he would say it, okay? Or uh, Fifi over there. Hey, Fee, you look pretty weak today. Yeah, I sure am. So they're going to respond however they respond. Uh, so part one, I call out the obvious. Man, that's a terrible limp. Looks pretty uncomfortable. That, this is how I approach it. Maybe something like this will work for you. <clears throat> looks pretty uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. How'd you like to get rid of that? Oh, I'd love to get rid of that. They all say that, something like that. They'll respond, you know, oh, I'd love to get rid of that, or I'd do anything to make this go away. They'll, re whatever, they'll, they'll use, they'll, there. That. Trent would say, yeah, buddy, I want to get rid of this. <laughs> that would be his way, but it would mean the same thing. <laughs> I'm just having fun with him because he's sitting two floors above me. He's, he's, he's literally right above me, two floors up. <clears throat> so, Trent, today you're the head and I'm the tail. Okay, so um, anyway, we're just <laughs> we're having a little, we're having a little fun. All right, so so here's how it goes. Okay, let's start this over again. Let's get focused. Focus, focus. Wow, that's some kind of limp you got there. Looks pretty uncomfortable. Oh, you have no idea. It's so uncomfortable. How'd you like to get rid of that? Oh, I'd do anything to get rid of that. You know, now this is my part again. You know, it's an amazing thing. I pray for people and God heals them. Would you let me pray for you? You know, it's an amazing thing. I just found over and over again, if I pray for people, when I pray for people, God heals them. Would you let me pray for you? You don't even realize what I've just done here. What's this church called? Decree, Declaration Church. What's this call called? Decree for Canada. What did God say the day that he told me to start this call? Start decreeing my promises into your nation and calling forth that which is not. When I say, catch this now. You know, it's an amazing thing. I pray for people and God heals them. I just decreed a thing and established it before I even began to pray for them. <clears throat> I harnessed a script. Now, I didn't look him in the eye and go, I'm going to decree a thing and I'm going to establish it and I decree that I pray for people and God heals them. But basically what I did was I looked him in the eye and I made a decree. It's an amazing thing. I pray for people and God heals them. And I just went and did what God told me to do in Job 22, 28. I decreed a thing. I established it before I even began. Let's connect another dot. Okay? We're starting to stitch this thing up. <clears throat> remember, 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 you cannot pray effectively for yourself or anybody else, and you can't pray about anything and then doubt or speak negatively about it. You must have a steadfast belief that if God said it, he meant it, no wavering. You either have faith or you don't have faith. This is black, this is white. This is hot. This is cold. Lukewarm. He's going to spit out all day long. He's not going to let that sit in his mouth. Don't let it sit in yours. Spit lukewarm out of your mouth. Take it in fully hot or fully cold. Make a decision. But Jesus said, right here, a double-minded man receives nothing from God, James 1, 6. The paraphrase is, you can't pray effectively for yourself or anybody else and then doubt it. Because there's no faith in that. So, let's go back and do a little review. Jesus said, Behold, I've given you all authority over all power of the enemy. Do you believe it? Then quit doubting. Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the things that I'm doing and even greater things. Do you believe it? 
then quit doubting. And Jesus said, and these signs will accompany those who believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Do you believe it? Then quit doubting. <laughs> In Genesis 4, God said, God comes to Cain and says, Cain, why are you so dejected? Don't you know you'll be accepted if you do what is right? We could just stop right there and examine what does it mean to do what is right? And we could answer that question with to do whatever Jesus told us to do. That would be doing what's right. God says right here, comes to Cain, why are you so dejected? Don't you know you'll be accepted if you do what is right? But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is always crouching at the door waiting to pounce on you. You must subdue it. I'm not going to subdue it. You have to subdue it. You must subdue it. You must master it. You must be its master. That's Genesis 4, 6 to 7. Jesus said it like this. Go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Did Jesus say it? Would he tell us to do something that he hasn't equipped us to do? Did he say, I've given you authority? Did he say, I've given you all power over the enemy? Did he say that these are the signs that will accompany those? Well, then, then he says, go, just go do it. Go heal them. Go cleanse them. You are my authorized agent. You've got the deputy badge on you. Go do it. But now let's go back to Genesis 4 and tie these two things together now because they are connected. God goes to Cain and says, hey, why are you so dejected? Don't you know you'll, you'll, you'll be accepted if you just do what's right? What's right? Well, doing what Jesus told us to do, that's the right thing to do. But if you refuse to do what's right, well, you better watch out because sin is crouching at the door waiting to pounce on you. That's the word. Actually, it says waiting at the door eager to pounce on you so that it all fit on one line. I took out the word eager. It's eager to pounce on you. In other words, it wants to, don't let it. Jesus said, go heal the sick, go cleanse the lepers, go cast out demons, Matthew 10, 8. So what's the right thing to do? Well, how about doing what Jesus told us to do? But here's the problem for so many of us. We start to doubt. Our minds start to say things like, well, what if it doesn't work? Or what are they going to think of me? These are all anti-Christ statements. Everybody thinks the Antichrist, when we talk about the Antichrist, we're looking for the devil with horns to come and rule the world. No, Antichrist is anything that's against the edicts of Christ. Anything that's against Christ. If Jesus said, go heal the sick, and you go, well, what if it doesn't work? That's an, that, you are now counteracting Jesus' word. That's Antichrist. So in a way, it's an akin to sin because sin is just simply missing the mark. And if you're not hitting the mark that Jesus told you to hit, you're in sin. And sin is always crouching at the door waiting to pounce on you. That's what this doubt and unbelief is. All of these are antichrist statements. They go against what Jesus Christ said. Just like sin, doubt and unbelief is always crouching at the door waiting to pounce on it. And you must subdue it. You got to tell that thing to shut up. Hey, peace, be still. Hey, mind, shut up. <sighs> and this is where you take your spiritual authority even over your own very soul now. And we all did this exercise. So <clears throat> we're going to get to that. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. Isn't that Job 22, 28? You shall decree a thing and it'll be established to you. It's the, found, it's, it's the bedrock. It's the foundation of this entire church. Power authority through declaration. Power, well, power and authority exercised through declaration, through speaking to it, speaking to it like it's a living, breathing, hearing thing, because it is. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. That's God's word. So it's true. It's irrevocable. So I always look at the person who needs prayer and say something like, you know, it's an amazing thing. I pray for people and God heals them. And in so doing, I've now decreed it and established it before I even begin to pray. I simply call on God to fulfill what he said he would do. 
The outcome is not up to me. The outcome is up to God. So let's just go through a couple of things to get ourselves into the right mindset that we can start releasing healing. This is how we do it. One, remember, you are not God. Your name is not God, and you are not Jesus. You are not the healer. You are simply the authorized vessel to release it through your voice. You are not God. You are not Jesus. You are not the healer. You are simply the authorized vessel to release it through your voice. And when you come to that realization, there's no pressure in it. Two. Tell your doubting mind, okay? We're soul, body, spirit. What's the soul? Mind, will, and emotion. Stubbornness, doubtingness, that all comes from the soul. That all comes from the mind. Tell your doubting mind. Speak to this mountain and it will move. Speak to that giant called doubt and it has to move. You speak to it. You, don't, you can't think this. You, you got to speak it. Because it's an antichrist, demonic thing that's coming upon you to cause you to doubt and have all kinds of anxiety over this, and you got to tell that thing to go. Just speak to it. Tell your doubting mind to shut up and obey the Holy Spirit. So we all did this exercise a couple of times a couple of weeks ago. And we just simply say, hey, mind, hey, 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 mind, peace. You be still now. I, sp I actually do speak to myself like this. I do. Hey, 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 hey. Just like I talked to that dog over there. Hey, 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 mind, hey, be still. You must obey the spirit. Pause. Okay, now spirit, take me to the father. And you just position yourself to get back into that place where the spirit's in control and not the mind. Now, I'm not going to do this in front of, I mean, if I'm going into a prayer line tonight, we got 100 people that want prayer tonight. I'm not going to do that in front of everyone. I'm going to be pre-prepared with this. And by the way, I also want to say, I don't even need to go through these exercises anymore. Why? I used to. Why don't I anymore? Because I've done it so much that it's just become second nature to me now. It doesn't matter what I feel like. I just, I just do it. I just believe it. I just do it. And what God is saying to us today is just, just, just do it. And the more you do it, the easier it gets, the easier it gets. You don't even have to think about this anymore. It just becomes, it's, it's, it's just like, you know, like tying a shoe. You have to learn it once and now you can just do it over and over again, even with your eyes closed. It's like riding a bike. You have to learn it a couple of times with some training wheels. The, you, you've had your training wheels. Take them off. It's time to ride. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Take the training wheels off. So I basically put myself in a position. Hey, cool it. You got to obey the Spirit. <clears throat> and then before praying for anyone, and I'll do this over and over again tonight, everyone that comes up for prayer, sometimes it'll be very audible, sometimes it'll be very soft, but it'll always be verbal. I say, Holy Spirit, come. God's the healer, not me. So I'm asking Holy Spirit to come now. Now remember, I've already decreed a thing. I say, you know, it's an amazing thing. Use your words. Find your way to say something like this, but you decree a thing and you establish it. So I always begin with, I look at him in the eye and I go, it's an amazing thing. <laughs> I pray for people and God heals them. You like to get rid of that? So that's street ministry kind of stuff or out there kind of stuff. Tonight at the healing summit, I'm not going to look at everyone and say, it's an amazing thing. I pray for people and God heals them. I'm going to pray. To, I'm going to blanket pray that over the entire venue. Lord, you said I decree a thing and I establish it. It's an amazing thing. I pray for people. You heal them tonight. I'm going to pray for a lot of people and I'm expecting you to heal them. I'm going to pray that as a blanket covering over the entire event. Okay? So you see, the only thing that changes is the way that we use it, but we use all of it. <clears throat> depending on the circumstances. And then I simply, now I'm getting ready to pray. I go like, okay, Holy Spirit, come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. 
And then I just speak to the situation or the thing. I speak to it. If it's a sickness, I speak to the sickness. I've been speaking to this nastiness, this demon that's been in my lungs producing all this black tar. It's just, I know for sure it's from the pit of hell because phlegm isn't black. I know this is a demonic attack in response to what we did last week and in response to what we're going to do tonight and all the teaching you've been getting here. There's been war for this church. I'm telling you, there has been a serious war over this church because this church has had the boldness and the audacity to move forward in these things and to have conversations like this where very few others would. There's been a war here. And I say to you again, Satan, you always lose, including this one. I'll go 15 rounds with you, and you'll go down every time. For I'm a child of the Most High God. I am bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, and no weapon formed against me will prosper. We, you can make the same declarations over yourself. But So now this person's standing in front of me, whether it's in the street or in a healing summit, and I just speak to the thing, well, I got, you know, I got cancer, or I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sick, or I got depression. I speak to it like a living, breathing thing. Hey, cancer! And Jesus gives us the example. I command you to shrivel up and die. You speak to it like a living, breathing, hearing, listening thing, because it is. Because there's a spirit behind it. And you speak to it. Hey, cancer, I command you to come out of that body. Authority. The authority. The power to control, command, and determine. Command. Those are all verbs. Hey, cancer, I command you to come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out. I command you to shrivel up and die. Hey, pain, this is exactly what Tom Loud did with John, is John laid his hand on Jeanette and said, just repeat this. I command it to come out now. He spoke to it, not to her. He spoke to it, not to her. It's the it that's got to go, not the her that's got to go. Sometimes we got some people in our lives, and they're the her that got to go, but not this time. Anyway, just fooling around a little bit here, but it's true. <clears throat> I've had to cut some people off. We all have. Now, just like Peter, take authority and speak to the sickness, speak to the pain, speak to the tra trauma, and command it to go. Gold and silver, I have not, but what I've got, I got authority. I say, get up and walk. Go. Hey, infirmity, sickness, crippleness, get out. In Ezekiel 37, 4 to 6, it reads, Then he said to me, this is God said to Ezekiel, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say. He's speaking to a bunch of dead bones. But if you really listen to the scriptures, even God himself doesn't call the dead dead. He says they're sleeping. They can still hear. Everything is a vibration and a frequency. Even dead bones are vibrating. This desk upon which my hands now sit, as does this monitor and camera, is made of wood, and the wood is vibrating. It can hear me. I can speak to it. I can speak to the trees. They're alive. And God says to Ezekiel here, probably the craziest thing he ever heard, but now in the light of this teaching, it totally makes sense. God says to him, speak a prophetic message to the bones and say, hey, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to put a new breath. So this is not Ezekiel putting breath in. This is what the Lord says. The Lord says he's going to put a brand new breath into you and make you live again. So he speaks to it. Hey, cancer, hear the word of the Lord. I command you to come out and God is going to put a fresh wind in your lungs. Hey, cancer, hear the word of the Lord. Come out of her. This does not end in death. This ends in life and life more abundant. And now we can start taking these things and speak to it. Remember, we don't beg God to do. You better catch this. 
we do not beg God to do what he's instructed us to do. We don't come crawling on our knees. Oh, God, would you please heal Sally? Oh, God, would you? Oh, God. No. No. You'd never see a sheriff walking around like that. You'd never see a deputy walking around like that. And I don't want to see the people of God walking around like that. I take authority over this and I say, hey, Bones, listen to the word of the Lord. You come out now and I'm putting life back into you. This ends in life, not in death. Life more abundantly indeed. You don't beg God to do what he's told us to do with the authorization and the deputization that he's put upon us. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who approaches him must believe that he exists and rewards anyone who earnestly seeks him. Exercise your faith and you'll see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. This is God's promise to you as spoken through the voice of this prophet. <clears throat> Your turn. Who's leading communion today? <clears throat> All right, I'll take the pressure off for a second. Was that good? Why don't we turn our mics on? Let's talk about what you just heard here. I believe that that's an anointed word from the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Well, <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I just, this thought just came, or like this question came to me when you were speaking, Howard. <clears throat> Why is it so easy to believe that when we pray for somebody for salvation, that they're saved, but mm. we question healing? Amen. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's we the never same question reason. salvation. We never question it. It's easy. We do it. We have the faith for that. But when it comes to healing or anything else, oh, I'm just feeling that. Amen. Like we question that and we shouldn't because it's the same thing. It takes the same faith. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, well, that's exactly. Well, hang on. Hang on. I, I, thank you for opening that door because here, I, I'm going to say this. Here, we, we just said about healing. We just said about healing. I'm not God, I'm not Jesus, I'm not the healer. I'm just a vessel through which to release it by my voice with the authority I have. None of us can, now, now let's go, so that, that's the healing thing, the faith thing, the salvation thing. I can't make anybody a Christian. No. Only God can do that. Mm -hmm. In faith, I pray that they receive Christ and then God does it. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's exactly the same thing. same thing. It's the same thing. We have the faith for salvation and it's easy and we do it. We don't even think about it. But when it comes to the healing part, then we suddenly step back. And it, it's it's me. Like, he's asking me the question. I wrote it down in my journal. And I'm like, I have to repent for the doubt. I re I have to repent for all, the, for all the false teachings and all the false things that I've heard and taught myself about not being scared for praying. Because what if it doesn't help? But it, what if it doesn't work? But I never what if it does? My, <laughs> well, well, but I never questioned myself when I pray for salvation that it's not going to work. Like, how twisted is that? Yeah. <laughs> like, scary. we don't question that. I never stand in front of somebody and pray for them for their salvation. I go like, wait a minute. What if it doesn't? What if God doesn't save them? Hello, it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's good. <laughs> I love it. It's the, same thing. it's the same Jesus. He heals as much as he saves somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That just, it just blows the lid off for me. Like my head just goes like, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. We're going to move on because this is a recording for everybody. And this is a seminar on healing. And I want this disseminating to the nations now. This is an anointed teaching on healing. I've never heard of healing. Heal, heal. God gave it. He downloaded this to me. All of these little pieces did it. It took me. It took, it, it took me. It, Trent's been here. I've been working on this for hours on hours. But the download came in minutes. But putting it into some kind of discernible form that took some time. This needs to go out now. There's an anointing on this teaching. What Tom Loud does is transformational. Uh, what is Buddy there? I can't remember. Uh, Pete, 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 Pete. That's that's annoying. And there's an anointing on this. And this needs to go far and wide now. And I don't want it being distracted. 
by all kinds of sundry issues. We are called to go out and heal the sick and do what Jesus did, and that's the point of today. <clears throat> Can I make a point here? Yeah. If you, if you do, if you do what you've learned to do, then these people can be believers. It might turn their hearts to the, to the Lord. Not might will. Yeah, exactly. The soil gets tilled. Some of them will take Jesus right there on the spot. And some of them, uh, the, the soil got tilled and the seed went in. And we don't know when it's going to, but we do it. Hey, listen, you know, Jesus, if they, and if there's an instant healing, if there's an instant healing, then the most obvious response would say, isn't that amazing? Look what, look what God just did for you. Are you ready to know him? Man, you should just, just say thank you to, just say thank you, Jesus. And we can lead them to Jesus just like that because they're going to see themselves be healed in an instant. They, they, they know a miracle just happened. I mean, it becomes so obvious. Man, wow, look at this. Even Jesus said, huh? and they all ran off. He healed 10 lepers. Only one came back and said, thank you. Where are the others? He said. So we're gonna, you'll see these instant healings, and you just, hey, you just got healed. Thank, just, just say thank you, Jesus. Just thank him for it. And after they do that, say, are you ready to know him? And they'll either say yes or no, and we don't push it. Because Jesus isn't going to kick the door down. But man, they just, the door's been opened now for this conversation, and the seed goes into what's now fertile soil, which is now connect that other dot. This is what we've been saying for weeks. He's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh and the great revival and the billion soul harvest begins, not because we preach the gospel, but because they experience his goodness through signs, wonders, and miracles. That's what this is all about. This is the increase of the kingdom age now, but it's going to happen like this because a bunch of people that they've been unchurched and they've seen nothing but religion and their only concept of God and Jesus is this religious crap that's been thrown at them through churches and through the media and through everything else. We're not going to win them with the gospel because they're not ready for that. Now, some of them we will. I mean, there's an exception to every rule. We're going to go get them with signs, wonders, and miracles. And this teaching on healing is all about releasing it so that they can experience the goodness of God and then create that fertile soil so that kingdom people can be born. The gospel message will be the healing. And then we can bring the scriptures in behind it. But we, as the people of God, use the scriptures and the foundations we've been taught to go do what he told us to do.